Okay. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to our manifesting business plan session. So this is the second of a series of three. So we started off with vision boarding, which is a fun exercise to just start, you know, dreaming and visualizing what it is that you desire. That was a great session. Uh, I got to, to um, watch it myself. I, my vision board is actually a PowerPoint presentation on my computer. So I've been designing vision boards, except I called it a treasure map back in the 1990s um, when I was first introduced to feng shui, and which is the um, ancient Chinese art of placement and how your environment impacts your success in life. And it's all based on energy. It's actually a science. And so people think, oh, it's airy fairy voodoo. And it isn't. It's a science. It's based on the play of yin and yang energy, potential and kinetic energy, and then the elements that exist in the world. And thankfully, quantum physics and modern science is validating what the ancients knew all along. And now we know all of this stuff that I, you know, like uh, people thought I was really eccentric and out there for <laughs> is actually real because there's been studies to show how meditation helps you, visualization helps you. And most of our existence is non-physical. Things are thoughts before they're things. And so when you think back to, well, we, uh, you know, most of us have flown in an airplane, right? There was a, a point in time where that wasn't actually physically possible, but it, it was in the minds of people. And so the Wright brothers had an idea, a concept. And so energy comes in uh, varying degrees. And when it is a thought, um, it's light. But the more you think it, the more you think it, the more you think it, and the more minds collectively think it together, it becomes dense. It becomes what's called plasma, and then it becomes matter. And so this is just science. That's how it works. Okay. So I'd say over 99% of existence is non-physical. And then there's this physical reality that we can actually touch and it's dense matter. So we are going to be approaching our business planning like that. We are going to connect with, you know, that vision that you had that you put on your vision board. We'll go even deeper into that and into the energetic dynamics of that. And then you're going to be putting some concrete things down on paper. And then most likely next week with um, Pam, you'll be doing what's more traditional business planning. And it will be probably the best business planning you've ever done because, you will have the energetics behind it. I did business planning for years in real estate that was just so boring with my broker managers. And it's like, you're gonna do this many transactions and, da, 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 and, da, 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 and do this many call, but it was never attached to something that was deeply passionate and exciting for me. And it wasn't until I merged my passion with my profession that I actually things started to work for me in real estate. And so I see that with new folks coming into the business that sometimes there's a missing link and you've got to take your passion and weave it into your profession so that you know your why behind what you're doing and then trust, 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 because they, there are some things that happen overnight. However, most things take time, just like a baby it takes nine months, an avocado takes nine months. And so you don't want the avocado as soon as it you know, starts. And the same thing, you don't want a baby to be born as soon as it has been conceived. It needs the full nine month gestation period. And so trust the process. So what we're doing right now, literally, if we just did this session today, it is enough for you to manifest business. And then it's even, you know, it's great that you're going to do it further and go further with the um, action items that you're going to develop with Pam. And she is so motivational. And so you're, you can, um, you know, garner some of her enthusiasm and that will help you um, propel it even forward. And I do recommend that you internalize your business plan. So once we come up with your vision, and um, you know your vision, your mission, your ideal client, your business attraction strategies, all of that. 
is that you review it every day until it is completely internalized and then release it and let it go. Meaning um, don't, uh, you know, don't count, you know, count things until before they happen. Like when's this baby going to be done? <laughs> and we're only on month three. Okay. Um, is it you're going to release and let go of the results and trust that they'll, that things will show up, the people, opportunities, and resources that you require. So with that said, I'm going to give you the difference between goals and aspirations, or goals and manifestation. So when you set a goal, <clears throat> there is a pathway to get there because somebody's either done it before, um, and you can go to them, or you've done it before enough to know the formula to get there. Okay, so that is a goal. So say your goal is to um, lose weight. And I, I wouldn't recommend that because it's not in positive conscious language. <laughs> and so um, I would recommend you reframe that into what is your desired outcome? Well, I desire to wear a size such and such of clothes. I desire to, and then what does it look like, feel like? I desire to be able to run three miles with ease and grace to hike Mount Charleston, you know, with ease. So what does, um, what does actually losing weight mean to you? And what's the visceral feeling once you've accomplished it? Once we tap into that, um, then, well, there are other people that have done it before, right? And so we know that process. And some of plans might work for you, some might not work for you. But what you want to do is write your goals and, um, and your aspirations in the desired outcome. I desire to wear a size such and such with ease and grace, you know, consistently, blah, 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 okay? Feel good and healthy and all the emotions around it. And then, then you're going to attract the people, opportunities, and the resources for it. And somebody has done it before. So a goal is somebody's done it before. With an aspiration or a manifestation, similar process in making sure that you put it in positive conscious language, that you send out a demand of some sort of what it is that you desire to attract to you. And how is it going to feel? Like literally, how will it feel once it's manifested? Once we have that energetic signature of how it's going to feel, then we can release it and let it go and trust the people, opportunities, and resources will come to us, okay? And the, the other difference between a goal and an aspiration is with a goal, you are 100% in control. If you make it or don't make it, it's on you, okay? Um, well, the same thing with an aspiration and manifestation, but a little bit different. But what I mean is it's on, the, on your effort, okay? So if it is to um, be healthier and to wear a certain size of clothing, then I already know plans to get there. It's about eating healthy, having a healthy lifestyle and all of that jazz, going you know, to the gym or doing some kind of working out, doing something fun like dance classes. I put some dance stuff there. <laughs> if you want to learn swing this month, that in the month of December, that'll be fun. Um, so you know that there are action items to, to get you there and you're in control of them. No one can do the push-ups for you, okay? You have to do your own dang push-ups, <laughs> okay? Darn. <laughs> um, with an aspiration or a manifestation, you are relying on co-creation, which means there are unforeseen people and opportunities and resources you have no idea about yet because you haven't been there before and and essentially no one has you're it's on the leading edge of creation so going back to the wright brothers flying that's just like a concept that you know people oh, i'd love to fly like a bird however there wasn't anything realistically that we could do to fly at the time Right. And so that's when you have an aspiration or a manifestation, it's outside of your conceptualization. It's something that you desire. And at the same time, you don't have any idea how to make it happen. OK. And so um, as we're going through creating a prophesizing a year from now, what does our life look like, feel like on on multiple levels? and then integrating all of that, and then um, weaving that into our business plan and our life plan, okay? 
is think of things as, is this a goal or is this an aspiration? Because your approach is going to be different. Yeah. If it's a goal, you already know the action items. You're going to knock those out on a regular basis, okay? When it's an aspiration, there is a great deal of trust and you must rely on your intuition to guide you. Now, most business coaches, most broker managers are not going to go, oh, use your intuition in your business, <laughs> right? Trust, it's going to happen, right? No, they're going to be like, did you door knock? Did you do this? Did you do that? <laughs> they're going to all be about action. But manifestations are about being. You must be it before you see it, okay? And that's where people will fall off and start to drift because they don't have enough evidence yet. And then their negative self-talk creeps in. So uh, there is a saying in the coaching world that, um, that you don't know it unless your life shows it. And I disagree. You must know it first before your life shows it. And uh, for those of you who understand biblical terms, to know, it was to actually create, right? Um, and so that is to you know, co-create, procreate. <laughs> and to know something is like a very visceral knowing that you have. You own it. You embody it. So you're midwifing your plan today, okay? That is what we're going to be doing together is you're midwifing that plan today. And you must know it first before your life will show it. You've got to be it. So it's be, then do, then have. Most folks mess that up and they're like, oh, I've got to do, 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 do so I can have. And then I'll be happy. No, 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 no. You got to be it first. Then the inspiration will show up. And then, then that's where you take action. So we talk about the law of attraction. The word attraction has three words in it. Action, attract, and traction. First is the attract. Then there's action. And with good morning. And then with that, you get traction. Once you get momentum going, there's some space right here. Once you get momentum going, nothing can stop you. But first, we open ourselves up to attract the people, opportunities, and resources. And when they show up, this is where your intuition comes in. When they show up, that is when you take inspired action. So your intuition then shifts into inspired action. And then you'll get traction. And with that is momentum. And like I said, nothing can stop you at that point. Nothing can stop you. Okay. So we're going to tap into that. Most of us live in our heads <laughs> and aren't really settled into our hearts and into our gut, which is where that all that lives. The emotions and the, um, the intuition is deeper in our bodies um, than our mind. Okay, all, we use all three of these to attract and to um, attract things to us. However, most of us are, are super head heavy <laughs> and not so much in the heart and in the gut. And so that's what uh, I'm gonna do is with a closed eye exercise is to bring you right down into your body. And then, then we will do our prophecy in that space. Otherwise, if you're just in your head, you're going to be doing that uh, that business plan that I was talking about earlier, where it's not attached to your passions. It's just what somebody else wants. And you're not going to be really connected to what it is that you truly desire, what's in your heart of hearts. And I find this a lot, especially with people who grew up in high controlled households or with high control religions, high control circumstances around them is they've been programmed of what success is like, what being a good person is like, la, 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 from the outside in and not from the inside out. So this is the deal. We're all awesome, good people, okay? So you don't have to worry about proving yourself to anybody else, okay? You're a good person. You were born good. You are good. You're always going to be good, okay? And most of life is good. Despite what the media wants to sensationalize, most people are good. And most of life is full of goodness. 
yeah, there are challenges. So I'm not going to say that everything is just easy breezy, you know, they're doing, getting in shape. You still got to do the push-ups, right? There's still effort and um, things might come along where you, oh, you um, pulled a muscle or something, you know, and that stuff happens. Okay. I totally get that. And how we show up is how we're going to um, experience life. And so let's just show up a hundred percent and, um, and with total love for ourselves. No negative self-talk. Okay. We're our own best friend. We had a partner with ourselves in our business and partner with ourselves with this um, life plan, business plan that we're creating. So there's nothing wrong with you. Nothing needs to be fixed. You're awesome the way you are and you can get better and better. We can all, we all have room for improvement. Okay. And, um, and you can improve as, as you wish. Awesome. So let's go ahead and um, some of, how many people did do the vision boarding exercise already? Okay, wonderful. If you didn't yet, that's fine. You can do the vision boarding after this. In fact, you might be super inspired to do vision boarding after this, because then you might realize, oh, you know what? I had a dream for a specific car on my vision board, and that's not even my ideal car. You know, now you're tapping into what you want. Yeah, maybe that's something somebody else wanted. And you're like, ah, that's the sign of success for me. But is it something that you really truly desire? Okay, so re this is what we're going to get clear on today is what you desire. Now, if you're in partnership, either in your business or in your life with someone else, I do recommend that you both go through this process. It's great that, you, that you're here together, um, is that you both go through this process and have a vision for your lives and then do one for the relationship. Okay, because, and, the, or, and if it's in business, then do one for the business. So you each have your own unique vision, uh, you know, mission, goals, aspiration, all of that jazz for your own life. And then you come together and say, okay, what are we co-creating with our business? What do we desire our business to look like, feel like a year from now? I, do, I like to do five a five-year prophecy and then come back to one-year prophecy and then come back to the 30, 90 days. Um, you know, what does, are there shifts that I need to make, um, it, how I'm showing up? Okay, so it's all about the being. Be do have. Awesome. Okay, so let me pull up. I am going to pull up the um, handout that we had. And Lacey, if you could put that in the chat box, that would be great. Yes, it's there. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Maybe I should download it from there. But I think I can scroll through here and get it pretty quickly. As it was our 2022 business plan. <laughs> it was emailed however if you didn't rsvp it was definitely not emailed to you <laughs> i'm gonna pull it from the chat make it easier hey tomorrow it looks like it's the second item on your list oh did it thank you oh now that i closed it out I quickly cleaned up my, um, <laughs> oh, there it is. It's right on my lap, my desktop. Okay, awesome, thank you. <laughs> Might take a second to open. Okay, it's opening. This is the handout you have. There's probably not enough room to write right onto the handout what it is that we're doing. So um, the folks in the classroom have access to, um, if you do not have a, a pad of paper in front of you, just grab what, any one of these journals, so those will work. Dream <laughs> There's some more conservative ones over there, Steve, if you wanted a conservative one. Shank, there's a shank one that says shank on it. <laughs> what, it yeah. Ooh, what happened to mine? Did it just disappear when I just did that? My whole handout disappeared. Or just... Um, what is that? Control Z? Oh, good. Thank you. Control. 
Does that Tomorrow, I can share my screen if you'd like with the document. Yeah, but I want to um, be able to scroll through it. Uh, I think because I closed it too fast and I deleted, I deleted it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, I, ha I have it in the chat. Thank you. Awesome. Was that it? Yes. Perfect. So we're going to start with our why. So, oh, I should have um, pulled up the PDF. That would have been great. <laughs> All right, so you have this breakthrough 22 business planning, starting with our why. So what motivates you? Um, you know, what are, why, why are you in real estate? Why are you here? And I don't mean just here in the room. I mean here on the planet. Like, why are you here? Okay, um, and you know, what really excites you about life? And what do you desire out of life? So we're going to be answering those questions today. And, and then after we answer those, then you're gonna, we're gonna um, tap into our tribe, the people that are around us that are supporters and maybe not so much supporting. <laughs> and, then, um, and then who maybe we want to invite more of into our lives and who you know, we are gonna either up-level our relationship with or they vibrate up or vibrate out. That's how I say it. <laughs> like we vibrate up or vibrate out, it just happens. Awesome, so let's start with your passions. After your family, your friends and your pets, what are you most passionate about? What are you most passionate about? And so just free write all of your passions out. Lacey, somebody said that they needed a Zoom ID um, for the to, to log in. If there is one, if you could put it in the chat and I'll send it to her. Or text me. A text actually text would be better. Or WhatsApp. Thank you, Ursula. Awesome. Tomorrow, I think we had 19 previously, so I think we're good. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Is anybody kind of stumped on their passions? No, we're, I think we're, I think we're a passionate bunch. <laughs> Birds of a feather, right? I think that's what our synergy community is all about. It's just good, right, positive energy. If I have a pause and then it gets my juices going again. Exactly. You write the word anything, like literally like whatever. anything, whatever. <laughs> just keep running. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I am so passionate about shoes. Awesome. Yeah. So what are some of our passions? Just shout, shout out some of your passions that you have. Volunteering. Volunteering. Yes. Okay. Great. Giving back to the breast cancer community. Okay. Great. Learning new things. Learning new things. Pam's shoes. 
Pam's shoes. Yes. I love them too. Yes, yes, absolutely. Mine are like traveling, definitely learning new things. I love new things, new experiences. Absolutely. Food and cooking. Food cooking. Awesome. And and Zoomers, you can put put them in the chat. That's fine. You can see some of yours. Okay, great. And so just in writing about your passions, like how do you feel? Good. Good. Okay, great. So we have this emotional guidance system within us. And literally things that feel good is giving us like the, the sign of like, go, it's a green light. When things feel bad, and I'm not going to demonstrate that, you know, is we're going in the wrong direction. Okay. And so we're never going to have a happy ending to an unhappy journey. We will have a happy ness along the way, like happy all along the way, if we are following our desires and staying in a positive energetic state. So will um, negative things happen and we'll feel negative energy? Yes. And it's going to be a sign that we are disconnected from our journey, basically. Okay. And look at the journey that we're creating here of like a year from now as like a, a hike or, um, or a vacation. Okay. It's in the planning to go on the hike and the, the steps of the hike, literally going all the way up the mountain. Like it is an, a joy, enjoyable experience, even if you're sweating, even if you get thirsty, even if you maybe trip or whatever, you know, like you're still, you have this goal to get to the top, right? And um, you're not going to just, well, and some people probably will, but it wouldn't be satisfying if you were just dropped in a helicopter at the top. Yeah, you can use, enjoy the view, but it's not as delicious as it is if you hiked all the way up, right? And the same thing with a vacation. You know, the goal of a vacation is not for it to be done. It's to experience it. And in the planning for it is fun. And the anticipation of it is fun. And then going on the actual vacation is joyful. It's not to get it done. We're not going to ever get life done until, well, it's done, <laughs> done, right? like done, we're dead. Um, however, I see that all of life is eternal. It's just a transition into something else, you know, and whatever that is, I'm, I'm not sure yet. And I'm eager to find out, but not that eager. <laughs> I'm more eager to play here for a while longer. <laughs> so that is what it's like. Okay. So um, we have this emotional guidance system within us. And if we're venturing towards, it's like that game that kids play where they hide something and then they're like, you're hot, you're hot. Oh, you're cold. <laughs> Our emotions are like that. So as long as we're feeling good and eager and have that excited anticipation, it's great. We're, go we're headed in the right direction. As soon as we're feeling you know, anxiety and negative things, something is out of alignment. So uh, when people say, oh, I'm lazy and procrastinating, da, 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 I got to do this thing and I just want to do it. Well, it's a sign. Procrastination is actually wisdom that something is out of alignment. And so that's an opportunity for us to then revisit what it is that we're you know, so gung-ho about that we have to do something, but we're not doing it. There's something out of alignment. And so that's where we go back to this space that we're doing right now, where we're manifesting, we are uh, you know, prophesizing, well, what does my, de what's my desired outcome? And then what will get me there with ease and grace? N and oftentimes we don't know the how, we don't know the where or the when of it, that's going to show its show up. And so we just ask questions. So, you know, what will it take? What will it take for that to happen? Okay. And then pay attention to what shows up along the way. So I have you identify your passions for a few reasons. One is for the feeling sensation of it. Now we're in a passion state. We have connected to our desires, um, things that are desirable for us. And these might change over time too. These are what I call abundance amplifiers. And something might work for a while as an abundance amplifier. And then in a different season of life, you're like, I'm not interested in that at all, <laughs> you know, and it's time to open up to an abun another abundance amplifier. We can leverage these abundance amplifiers 
for our business to attract business. So we can um, leverage these online and offline as our business attraction strategies. And so, um, you know, food and cooking, taking cooking classes, you're maybe cooking for people and having a party and, you know, um, you know, people love it when they, when they're a good cook and they like to, you know, feed, feed their food to other people. And then and there's like that fun experience. Right. And like, literally you could throw dinner parties and generate leads for real estate out of that. You like dancing, actually the dance instructor for my class, he's getting into real estate. He's so passionate about dance. And then after class, we, ch you know, people will chat and he is right on asking people for real estate business. He's like, I heard you were looking for something. You're going to be looking for a condo. Or you're looking for a house. <laughs> and that passion transfers, that passion transfers. People want to work with you because you're passionate, because you're fascinating. And so that you've got to bring that out of you and you can leverage your passions for that. I actually have more of that on Friday. If you're interested, um, we're going to be doing some branding and some social media stuff on Friday at Fairway Mortgage at, at uh, 10 a.m. You're welcome to come to that. And I have a whole business attraction strategy session that is about an hour long that's recorded that goes through, you know, then tapping into those and creating an online and an offline strategy around your passion. So those are your abundance amplifiers. This is how you're going to connect with your sphere of influence and also your ideal client. So in that business attraction strategy session, we take the time to identify who your ideal client is and come up with a description. And some of you have done post licensing with me, have gone through that process of identifying who is my ideal client? Who do I want to play with and work with? And we also do your mission and vision. So let's go back um, then and just have like a heart to heart, honest um, with ourselves about our tribe. So it's important for us to have supportive people around us, for us to create an environment, um, whether it's our physical environment or the people around us, all of that is, in, is integrated, that supports us. And so I'd list out who are the most important people in your life? Who are your most important relationships? Your top five. And then take inventory. How many of these folks or who is supportive of your dreams and desires and put a plus by them? And some might be so-so. <laughs> Just looking at my list and like, yeah, some are kind of neutral. <laughs> and then others might be discouraging. They actually are not championing you. And so what I have to share about that is that you have control over how you show up. We don't have control over how anyone else shows up. However, they are influenced by how we show up. And so really anchor into your power and vibrate at the frequency of who you choose to be and then they will either match you or they can't be around you, okay? Because like attracts like. So if they're in your space, there's on some level you're entertaining their energy, right? 
And so um, get very clear about, are you giving away your power to them? Are you lowering yourself to their vibration? And if you are, then take the power back, reclaim it, and be very conscious about how you show up. And then they will either shift and match your vibration or they will shift out, okay? We, we just want to have people that are supportive around us, okay? And um, over time, your, your sphere of influence will reflect that. That's why it's so good to do a, um, your ideal client. I was hoping that Pam would have her session first so I would know how much of this she's doing. So I'm doing a, as little traditional planning as possible just because you're, you'll be doing more of the traditional. Yes, okay, great, awesome, excellent. Okay, great, so now we know our abundance amplifiers to tap into our business uh, and so forth. So let's do our 2022 prophecy. Our goals, it's going to be a mixture of our goals and our aspirations. What does life look like for you? So you're going to do a journal entry and you're going to start with, I am so happy that, and you're going to date this entry the 30th of November, 2022. I am so happy that, and then you're going to write about the, uh, excuse me, is it 2022? Yeah, it was the, right now it's 2021. Yes, 2022. <laughs> and um, you're going to write about the year as it's already happened. Okay, so where are you November this date, November 2022, and then you're reflecting back on the year, personally, professionally, financially, what must have ha happened for it to be the best year ever?
Oh, okay. It is, um, probably text it to you. Let's see. Oh, okay. But I can email it to you. Um, so Lacey, Steve was uh, going to get, try to get in and then if we could email him the, the plan, that'd be great. And so make sure you're touching on all areas of your life. and actual events that happen through the year. And get as detailed as possible.
Okay, and I talked a little bit about goals versus aspirations in the beginning and what the difference is between the two. And of course, you're gonna have both goals and aspirations. And goal planning, a lot of people will um, approach goal planning with you know, the SMART, I'm sure most of you have heard about SMART goals, right? You know, to be specific and that they're measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. And I recommend that you're unrealistic. <laughs> okay, shoot for the stars because anything less than that is good. It's still gonna be awesome and probably a lot further than you would have if you were being realistic, okay? I know that there are some people that are inspired by big goals and other people are actually intimidated by big goals. And so feel into that for yourself, do what works for you. I'm one of those people who are like, oh, we're gonna do this, it's like so amazing, you know? Usually it ends up happening anyway. It's kind of like, what is it gonna take? What's it gonna take? And they're like, wow, you prophesize this. Yeah, that prophesizing is there's a formula to it. And um, so I recommend that you be as, um, you know, dream as big as you can possibly dream and then go further. Okay, so big, hairy, audacious goals, and I'm trying to remember who to, to um, reference that to. It's the good to great guy, right? Good to great? Yeah, big, hairy, audacious goals is how he, he puts it. So dream big. It is literally everything, everything, everything's energy. And so if there's something that you desire that you don't have yet, it's just because you're not a vibrational match yet. That's it. So it's just a matter of shifting your vibration and then allowing the gestation time, right? Allowing the gestation time. So there's a great method. I have my foresee it formula. As some people are in my manifesting miracles um, journey there in that group and have gone through this process where I have a foresee it formula. Uh, this is um, Helene Hatzel, so the winning sage. So if you wanted to pick up um, you know, her book, you're, you're welcome to. I have it all written out for you, but it's called the spec method. So first you select something and you're very specific about it, okay? What you desire. And then you're gonna project it and you project it by acting as mm. if, like as if it is a sure thing, okay? So you will, um, so uh, one example is, I have so many examples, but this is just a simple example. I was at a conference and they had this big prize that they were giving away at the end. It was wrapped up, so we didn't know what it was. Um, and I had already put out that I, I wanted a, a home studio. Okay, so I already had kind of put that out. That was, you know, earlier. And I had no idea that this was actually a home studio was with Joseph in that box. But I just knew I wanted to win the prize, <laughs> the big prize at the end. So I got my tickets. And on um, the last day of the conference is when they were giving it away. And you had to be there on time. It was an on-time drawing. And those of you who know me, I am only on time if I have an obligation to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> However, I was ready early that day and my buddy was running late and I'm like, hmm. so I had to check my energy around it because I was getting anxious. Like I am got to be there on time or I'm not going to win that thing. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to let it go. I already put it out to the universe. I'm winning it. So I went into my vehicle and I made room for the box because I had traveled there and I had stuff all in the back seat, which is where I really needed to put the box. And so I reorganized the car so that there was room for the box. So that is projection. I was projecting that I was winning that. And so we, um, we arrive and they were late because they had been doing a meditation earlier and people that had showed up for the meditation, they were still in meditation. And so they started late. Perfect. I'm like, see, everything is going right on time, right as I manifested. <laughs> and so I gave the tickets to my buddy and I went and used the restroom. This is my technique, which is to soften your focus. Once you're very specific and you launch your command is then it, you have to let it go. Okay. And so I like to soften my focus on things. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to go use the restroom. So I use the restroom and I come back and who's on stage <laughs> with my box, <laughs> my buddy, <laughs> which is great. So I took pictures and that went slid right into the back seat and we won it. And then um, we opened it up and it was a studio. So an at home studio. So it was cool. So that's the, that's an example of projection. So you've got to like act as if it's coming. Like when you order something at a restaurant, you order your food, right? 
and then you just let it go. The server put the order in, you trust that the chef's making it, and then you get back to your conversation, you know, with um, folks you're having lunch with, and you just know it's coming, it's going to show up. So you're just projecting it, okay? And you expect it, okay? You expect that it's going to come. And then the last thing is that you collect it, you receive it. And um, so for me, I, I do have four steps, but my, my fourth step is to, you know, to release it and let it go. But in the collection of it is that you appreciate it, that you're like, oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I say my appreciations before it even shows up because <laughs> I know it's coming. <laughs> so I appreciate you. And then I'll focus on um, the next thing that I'm looking to manifest. So let's look at your um, prophecy. And there were um, goals as well as aspirations in your prophecy. And so identify the three top goals or aspirations, like that it will be the best year ever if you <clears throat> accomplish these three things or if these three things show up for you, okay? So if you can circle it, highlight it, put an asterisk by it. And again, it could be a goal or an aspiration. Maybe it's to be an icon agent. And I picked out one that was personal, one that was professional, and one that's financial. If you want to do that, great. If if you're just some some years you're more focused on one thing than another, and that's fine. So if you're all in on your business this year, maybe they're all professional. Of course, you're going to accomplish so much more than this. So we're just going to focus on these three things. And right beside each one of them, how you're going to feel when they have come to fruition. How are you going to feel? Have at least three emotions. And then pick out one of those. And we're gonna, they're all so good, yes. You're gonna accomplish all three of them, but we're gonna pick out one of those to do an exercise with.
Does anybody want to share one of what they're going to be manifesting? Three. Okay. My first one is I took my parents to Thailand with me on my tab. Awesome. I've invested into a real estate asset with some of my best friends. And I've frozen the biggest, most expanding deal I've ever Wonderful. Those are some great and ones. So it shall be. Yes, and so it shall be. Yes, yeah, and so it is. Awesome. So um, let uh, the second one, read the second one again to me, please. Um, I have invested in a real estate asset with my best friend, and I understand that has to be more specific. But... I would definitely recommend more specificity around the emotions with it. So um, that um, you know, that it's a prosperous venture for all of you. Everyone is happy and satisfied with it. You know, what are the emotions around it? Because there's definitely a lot open for how that could show up. And so for those of you online, I'm not sure if you heard, but Daniel's going to be investing in an asset with his best friends. And so I would be even more specific because like the closer you get to some of, sometimes the closer you get to your manifestations, then contrast starts showing up. And so say, you know, two of your friends start having a disagreement about, you know, what asset to buy and da, 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 and like, um, you know, and then you're stuck in the middle and all of that stuff is, okay, I choose for this to happen with ease and grace for the highest and best good of all, you know, and that's my, that's pretty much my catch all with all manifestations is ease and grace for the highest and best good of all is sometimes that, then that, that way I know, like when stuff contrast does show up that it's happening for a reason. It's, um, I get to get more specific about it. I still trust that the highest and best good is going to come. It's kind of like when you write an offer for a client and you're like, you're, you're certain that that's their house, but then they lose it. They don't get it, you know? And you're like, ah, but then another one comes along. It's even better for them. You're like, okay, you just got to have faith. It's going to, um, it's going to work out. So yeah, I get a little bit more specific about that one. Okay. Awesome. Love it. And so just pick one to do this visualization exercise that we're going to do um, because it's our power is in the, the present moment. And so when we focus on one thing in the present moment, it gets all of our energy and then we can release it and let it go. And then you can do it with the next one. OK, so we'll at least go through the process with one and then you'll know what to do for the other two. And anything else that comes along. I mean, I do this stuff on a daily basis. I set intentions, you know, for the next hour. <laughs> like, this is going to be the greatest class ever. <laughs> you know, I'm going to put this behind here. I think I can. can yep. Here? Um, Lee, that's I, good. When Lee Thank I you. took over uh, Chrysler, uh -huh. uh, his mission statement was simple because he spent his entire career with Ford. Right. And his mission statement was be Be Ford. Yes. <laughs> no matter Great. what. Uh, oh, I love that. I'm going to, I'm going to do that. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. So the um, mission vision, uh, like I said, the ideal client mission vision statement, that's all in my business attraction strategy session. So you're welcome to do that. And I imagine that that's probably part of, you know, like what Pam's doing with you too. And you can uh, always refine and refine and, and get better with that. So I revisit, well, I, you know, revisit my life plan regularly. And um, it took me a while to develop my mission and vision statements where they're really solid right now. And I'm always um, updating my life plan in other ways. Okay, so let's go ahead. And if you are comfortable closing your eyes, you can close your eyes. If you're not, just stare at a space like out in front of you and then soften your focus, okay? I'm gonna close my eyes, um, but like you could, if I wasn't comfortable closing my eyes, I just focus on that little Christmas tree thing there and then I'd soften my focus, okay? And if you wanna put your feet flat on the, the, the floor, you can. Um, that way you can get you know really grounded and get some power from that. If not, um, that's fine too. <laughs> Okay, so go ahead and close your eyes if you feel comfortable and relax your breath. And keep our spine straight. And our head elevated. And have our palms face up on our lap as if we're receiving a gift and relax our shoulders, but have our chest open and bringing our attention slightly upward.
And then bringing more of our attention up, higher just above our heads. And then go even higher with our attention and bring it up to the ceiling. And then bring our attention up into the sky. And go even higher and higher and higher. Until we see, sense, feel, bright light, and then allow that light to come down, down, down into the crown of our heads. And allowing this golden light to come down into our bodies. And with it, activating our senses, our inner vision and our outer vision, our inner hearing and our outer hearing, our inner voice, as well as our outer voice. So that we can see, sense, feel, what it is that we need to see, sense, feel. To usher in our heart's desire. giving ourselves permission to know our truth, to speak our truth, even if it is silently to ourselves, and then allow this golden light to continue to come down into our chest, to our arms, the core center of our body, activating our heart center, so that we know in our heart of hearts what we truly desire. And that we have the wherewithal to embrace it fully and to step into our power and allow this golden light to go down, down, down to our hips, into our legs and then down into the ground. If it helps to imagine roots growing down from your feet, down, down, down to the center of the earth. Imagine them now. Otherwise, just allow this energy to flow, continue to flow to you and through you down into the center of the earth where you see, sense, feel, happy, joyful, abundant energy rise up, up, up into the soles of our feet and then throughout our whole body. This energy of abundance, vitality, belonging, love, appreciation, activating each and every cell and each and every organ. Now with health, well-being, brilliance, knowing, remembering a time that we were so happy And then allowing that happiness, that joy to be amplified. Breathing into that memory. 
and releasing and letting go of the memory while still holding on to the joy, the happiness, and allowing that happiness to concentrate in our core center while it then expands all the way around us, 360 degrees. Our happiness is bigger than the building we're in. It is bigger than the city we're in. It's bigger than the country we're in, the region we're in, the hemisphere we're in. It is bigger than the planet. We are expanding to this space. We can look back on the planet and it's as if it can be held just in the palm of our hands. We're that big. In our mind's eye, we're projecting out onto the screen in front of us. It's a galactic screen. It's the universal studio of the universe. Our deepest heart's desire. What we're gonna be most proud of accomplishing in the next year. It's playing out before us on the movie screen. We see a scene of celebration. We're celebrating our accomplishment. It's so fun to watch this play out on the screen in front of us. And now we pause the video and rewind it back to the moment we knew for sure it was happening. It was a sure thing. And then pause that scene. That's the scene we knew for sure it was happening. What does that feel like? And then press play and watch the scenes unfold from there. And then project even forward after the celebration. What's next? Now that I have this, I've accomplished this, what is next? And play that scene. Play out that aspiration. One year later, two years later, three years later, there's more to create. And it may be one blur right now. Rewind it back again. Rewind it to the moment you knew for sure it was happening. And pause that scene in the best part. 
to have a good representation of the aspiration. And now put a frame around it and pull it off of the wall and allow it to shrink down to your hands and from your hands into your heart and place the image in your heart of hearts. In the space in your heart that's so sacred, we only allow our most trusted relationships into. What I would really love is this, with ease and grace for the highest and best good of all. And so it is. And so it shall be. And when we're ready, we can bring ourselves back into this room, can wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, roll your shoulders, stretch. Mm. And so we planted the vision of our heart's desire. We played it out in our mind's eye. So we may not know the people, the opportunities and the resources yet, however, they will be revealed to us. Hold the vision, hold the vision, be committed to the vision. We can refine the vision. You don't ever want somebody to sabotage your vision or to get you sidetracked. Drifting happens when we lose sight of our vision. So when you lose sight of the vision, just come back to this space and to the process that we went through. You have an image of it right now in your heart of hearts. And so you can go right there. Go, oh yeah, I have that vision. It's right here in my heart. And you know the visceral experience of what it felt like, right? Did anybody wanna share their experience with their vision or their aha moment around it? Did it show up differently than you had imagined? <clears throat> You're all in, still in gamma. <laughs> you're still, you're all still in an altered state. Yes. For me, the, when we backed up to look at the time when we were sure it would happen, that was always what my dreams have been. Right. So it was really interesting to now have gone way past there. Yes. And now I see how that can totally happen. Yes. And that's now what the goal is, is get to that point. Then we know everything else will happen. Yes, yes. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, sometimes when we get even stuck on, on making this happen, it, it's helpful to just go one step further. Like, what's after that? Oh, okay. And then we have something to go beyond. And that's helpful to draw us through the obstacles we might have that it's come like that up. Goal, what was the goal now is just a key it's moved. to a door. Yep, to you another know, that, one. That, that, that has huge goals. Like, yeah, absolutely. Great. Yes, I love it. Yeah, that's great. And it's fun to do that in hindsight too. You know, like to look back at like, oh, there's something that, that you made happen, you know, like made, like not force making it, but you allowed it to happen, right? And there was something after that. And I like doing that too, because I am super results oriented. <laughs> and so I found, you know, being, you know, just growing up being goal oriented, that there is mourning after I reach something. And so the way I have dealt with mourning is having something else. Um, to, to um, that's the, what's next, what's next, what's next. And still celebrating, I've learned to do that. <laughs> Celebration is so important when you reach something is to actually enjoy it and savor it and celebrate it and still have something else to look forward to. Otherwise you'll get 
um, well, not necessarily that you will, but it, you, people can get depressed um, in that space. So always having something next to look forward to. Wonderful. Were there some other ahas and anybody on Zoom have an aha around that exercise? Miss Rosie, nice to see you. <laughs> Loving your glasses. Excellent. And Linda, beautiful, beautiful photo. So um, yes, go ahead, Pam, please so share. Yeah. Interesting. I fixed something in my conscious mind, but then when I got up there, I changed. I love it. it really something. <laughs> I love it because you were able to connect with your heart of hearts. Exactly. And then um, this in particular goal requires a lot of physical dedication, which is obviously bringing up a lot of obstacles. And so I was literally feeling all of those physical obstacles. So it was great to actually experience the end result. Yes. So I know it's all worth it. Yes, absolutely. So being able to clip through the pain and visualizing that at the end. Yeah, absolutely. And, and move through. And the good thing about this exercise too is <clears throat> you can take the visualization even back. So we did a screenshot of, you know, where we were, where we're going and you can play that video back all the way to now. And then that will help you too with the obstacles. And then I also like to ask, you know, questions along the way of, you know, what will it take? You know, what is it that I, I might, maybe that's something you need to start doing or something to stop doing to allow it to facilitate and is there a message? Is there some message? Because your intuition is guiding you. And that's what you tapped into was you consciously in your mind, in like your mind thought of something, but your intuition's like, hello, this is my heart's desire. That, that stuff is, you know, been there, done that. This is what I really want, <laughs> you know? And so that, and that is your abundance amplifier. I guarantee if you start focusing more on that, your business is just gonna get even bigger. And that's how, why I call these your abundance amplifiers is because there's just no stopping the abundance when you're in alignment with your heart's desire. It is an abundance amplifier. Your business is going to you know, be even better than it's ever been. Yeah, so that's awesome. Yay, love it. Because this is the deal is it doesn't necessarily take time for results, it takes courage for the results and that in that way. So like you already have a, a successful business going that just is basically like spinning a plate. And so we can think of um, exchanging time for money. You're not gonna make much money, but an entrepreneur, it's results. We get paid for results. And the better you are at your craft, the faster you're able to get results for people. Um, and because it's, you know, you have the systems in place, you have the, the track record, you have the leverage of other people and opportunities and resources and so forth. So then spinning that plate is just like, just a little tick, little tick. And so if you are, um, if you're just starting off with your business, then yeah, absolutely focus there. And then once that's up and running, then you have something else that you can add in. And so that's a good example of, of that. Wonderful. And see if she's here. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Oh, you're welcome. Any other aha? So I love that her um, Pam shared her intuition had for those of you who hadn't heard it online. It's her vision changed once she got into the closed eye exercise. Okay. So then. Um, so I'm going to leave the mission, vision, ideal client, and all of that jazz um, to when Pam does the, um, the session with you that's more traditional business planning. And there also, I put a link into Breakthrough Broker. Breakthrough Broker has a business plan that you can go through, and there's a video there. So you go to breakthroughbroker.com, or if you just Google 2022 business plan, you can download a biz in an interactive PDF of the business plan, and they have a video, and you can literally go through it step by step. And so you might even want to do that before you go to Pam's business planning session, because it'll just make it, you know, like solidify it even more. Okay. I do recommend you go through the exercise we just did with your other two um, aspirate goals, aspirations. And this is gonna be recorded. So you can just go to the time that this um, exercise is and go through that guided uh, meditation again. 
and that will help you. So let me talk about rewarding your actions and celebrating your results in your everyday activities, because you're probably going to come up with, um, with Pam with your, objection, your objectives and your action items. And so I can just share with you as far as like doing your real estate business, um, if you want to make a full-time income, you know, the, the numbers are there, you wanna make a full-time income, it requires, most business comes from your sphere of influence. Over 80% of your business is gonna come from your sphere of influence. You just gotta work your sphere of influence. Tap in your passions to connect with your sphere of influence. Um, and uh, having 100 relationships, 100 solid relationships in your KV core that you are cultivating regularly is enough to make over $100,000 a, a year, okay? And so you need to be connecting with them on a regular basis. So, um, and for those of you who want to go through this in more detail to put a plan together Friday when we do our branding and social media, um, I'll do this, but in a nutshell, it is that you're connecting with that sphere of influence on a regular basis. I used to, on the first mail to them, on the 15th, do an email. When I got started in real estate, we didn't have social media. Now you can totally do social media. I would only pick one social media that you're committed to. And that is where your ideal client is, okay? So some of you, your ideal client, like yours is probably gonna be on LinkedIn. Um, so you go, where is your ideal client? If they're on Instagram, do Instagram. Learn Instagram, do it, do it authentically. I, don't, I wouldn't pass your social media off to anyone else. It's you. That's what people are investing in, you, okay? So just get really good at that, okay? And limit your time because otherwise that's like another drug that can create drift, okay? <laughs> it's another addiction that create, can create drift. And so um, schedule that, that I'm gonna you know, do say three postings a week on, on LinkedIn, or maybe you're doing Instagram, you're doing daily. I love you're doing your, um, you know, doing your tours on your TikTok videos are so awesome. You have to be consistent, 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 consistent. People just wanna know you care and that you're competent. And so you're gonna demonstrate that you're competent by being consistent. And then in your actual post, you're demonstrating that you're competent. And I'm sure people already know that you care and that there's no way to extract that from what you're doing anyways, okay? And so you care, you're competent. Be consistent over time. Be on social where your ideal client is and be committed to that. And so connecting with your sphere of influence on a regular basis, they should not go more than 21 days without hearing, seeing, experiencing you on some level. So that's calling them, popping by and seeing them, um, taking them out to lunch, whatever it is, okay? And you can use your, um, your abundance amplifier to do that. And um, yeah, and then just letting them know you're in the business, right? It's like, you're ready for, to handle their friends, family, associates, colleagues to take care of them and that you appreciate them. So appreciate, I really appreciate you referring your friends and family to me. I promise I'll take good care of them. And so you're saying your appreciation for that business before it even shows up because you know it's gonna show up. You know it's coming. You may not know when, you may not know where and all of the how of it, but it is coming. Success is inevitable. Hold the vision, it's coming. So reward your activities and then celebrate your results. So say it is three postings, your week, and I would do it on a weekly basis. So, okay, I'm gonna post three times to LinkedIn. I am going to do an open house and I am going to make 25 calls to my sphere of influence. And I'm gonna follow up you know, with, or maybe it's 15 calls to your sphere of influence and 25 handwritten notes and two Popeyes, whatever it is, like come up with your activities that you're gonna be doing. And then when you've completed those, reward your activity. Reward activity, celebrate results. And pay attention to the inspired action that comes along too, okay? So you might receive an opportunity and say yes, and then take it. So one year I had on my um, business plan. So I do my business plan all through manifest, uh, you know, with law of attraction and manifestation. So I was like, I would like to work with more Canadians this year with ease and grace for the highest of this good of all. And then guess what? Just within like two weeks, 
I was able to, I was asked to speak in front of over 200 Canadians at the M and I put a whole speaking engagement together for them. I had the governor's office come and speak, did property tours for them. And so you might not know how it shows up <laughs> that came out of the blue. It really, it, it was, I put the feeler out into the universe and that's just how things work. Things are non-physical first and then they become physical. And so trust that things are manifesting for you. And the more in alignment you are with your manifestation, um, the faster that it will come in. Excellent. And then of course I noticed from, the, I got to learn from that experience that I didn't have systems in place to handle that many people. <laughs> and so um, it helped me learn and put some more systems in place. Excellent. So reward your activity, celebrate your results. So you complete all of your prospecting activity for the week then maybe your reward is to have a spa day or go to the movies or to you know have an afternoon off and read a book so i like to do free spirit friday <laughs> where if my prospecting is done then friday it's do whatever i like so um free spirit friday is my my reward and then celebrating your results this is something more tangible to do maybe like a vacation with a family um you can, you know, maybe purchase yourself something, so do something to celebrate. And um, yeah, it's fun to engage other people in your celebration, of course, too. So like, I like to buy myself a gift with a closing that will is memorable for me to remember my clients. And then I will name it something special, either from the house or the client. <laughs> so like one, one time I was working with this couple, um, this was, I've done, I've done two transactions with them. So I helped them sell, buy, sell, oh, three, excuse me. So I helped them sell their house. Their mom referred them to me and she's a licensee, but she's not active. And so she referred her son and his wife to me. I sold their little house, got them a bigger house. And then they decided to move cross country and help them sell, sell that. And um, so that on the third transaction, my printer was acting kind of crazy and I needed a new printer. So I was like, you know what, when this closes, I am going to get myself a new printer. And their last name was Divine, which I thought was Divine. So <laughs> it is called the Divine Printer. <laughs> and so uh, that's a way to celebrate. And so that's what, what I like to do is to, um, to celebrate with with a little little piece of something awesome and vacations are all, always a great way to celebrate too with your your family so put down what your rewards are going to be and what your celebration is going to be so let's um do that now since we had our um our manifest it's sometimes the manifestation itself is the is the reward and celebration however we're when we're when we're talking about our um, activities that Pam's got to go over with you as far as your business uh, planning activities. How are you going to reward yourself when you complete your prospecting for the week? And then when you hit your, your goals, how are you going to celebrate? Excellent. And I just noticed that I <laughs> erased the B on that. So I'll update that. <laughs> I think when I added the, the new break, breakthrough. UCNS. 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 Yeah, UCNS. it is a UCNS plan. <laughs> when I added the breakthrough broker um, link in there, I must have deleted the B. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. So that is what I have for you today. And, um, and then we have some lunch and we have some time to <clears throat> hang out and play together. So I, 
I wanted to get everything done within an hour and a half. So we would have another half hour to connect with each other and share our plan. And you can maybe get an accountability partner around it. Uh, some of us do have supportive people in our home. <laughs> Others don't, and that's fine. <laughs> and so um, this is a really good group of people to connect with somebody to share. And so as we um, first, we're going to hear from our lunch sponsor. And then after we do that, I would love for you to pick out one or two accountability partners in the group and share. And for those of you who are online, I'm going to put you into breakout rooms, um, you know, share what you're desiring to manifest in this next year coming up. And, um, and that will be great. And then we can champion each other all the way through the year and stay focused on what it is that we desire to create and co-create. Excellent. So Wanda, I'm going to have you come up and I'll, I'll finish doing what you're doing. Okay, perfect. Okay, great. Awesome. And, um, and so for those of you who are on um, Zoom, Lacey, are you able to do the breakout rooms? just shy of 20 minutes for the breakout rooms before lunch and learn. Perfect. Yes. And so uh, maybe a good 15 minutes would be great for the, um, Tomorrow, I won't be able to do that. I apologize to everybody. Yeah, no worries. And maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, honey. Thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. Excellent. So we'll hear from LaWanda and then we'll do our, our, um, yes. And the, this is a microphone, but you probably don't need, oh, well, you might, you might need it for the people that are online, I guess. Thank you. They could probably, they might be able to hear you. Yeah, you project pretty well. Awesome. Good morning. Is, is it, still, it is still morning, right? It is, it is. technically. All right. How are you guys doing? Excellent. Awesome. So as, can you guys hear me? Nathan, can you hear me? Everyone on here? Do I need the microphone? You can hear me. Perfect. Perfect. So as uh, Tamara stated, I'm LaWanda Austin, and I'm with Tycor Title. I'm the sales executive. Just a little about me right quick. Um, I've been in the industry 27 years. Yes, I started when I was two. <laughs> <laughs> Tough times. However, uh, 27 years in the industry, uh, 10 of those years at Tycor Title. Um, and so the ins and outs, backs and forth of anything when it comes to marketing yourself, that's where I come into play. Okay. I'm, I'm handing out our, there's a few pieces that are being handed out. Is that enough for everyone? Oh, awesome. Awesome. So what you have in front of you. period we're just chatting in the breakout rooms period you'll have it at least 10 minutes before 